hey my lovelies and welcome back to the channel so in today's video we are going to be reviewing some fragrances that i purchased um a while back and it was amazing francis kirk dijon i did an unboxing video so i will put that up um a card up so you guys can see the unboxing video so you can see what fragrances i'm pretty much going to mention in this video so i do own four fragrances from mfk's house and i believe that he is a beautiful perfumer he makes some of the most gorgeous perfumes you guys like seriously when i started getting into niche that was one of the brands that i can say i dabbled in in the beginning but nonetheless, I respect him for his house and what he produces because he just makes art. Seriously, you guys, like it's hard to dupe his fragrances, especially when it comes to Baccarat Rouge 540. You guys know that is like one of the most popular ones, but it's nothing like the real thing. I kid you not, you guys. It's it's never the same when it comes to his house so in this video i will be going over them and my experience with them so far and just giving them a slight review ever since i have purchased this because it was a big purchase like these fragrances are not cheap they are niche but you know when it comes to niche not all of them are super expensive but he's up there i can say i own more expensive ones but i'm not a niche snob i'm more so like i respect the houses and if they produce something that is really unique i am going to support so without further ado if you do love the content and you guys are here don't be shy leave a comment and let me know how you feel like if you guys own any of these fragrances what you think about them if you have came across some dupes and what are they and then also don't forget to hit that thumbs up button that helps out a lot and subscribe if you have not already and let's jump into the video so the first fragrance that i am going to mention is i feel one of his most daintiest fragrances um and i can admit i have not smelled nothing like this fragrance nothing at all nothing that even comes close girl like just he really nailed it on this one and that is none other than gentle fluidity gold so he does have a gentle gentle fluidity silver but i opted for the gold because this is more so like a vanilla amber fragrance slightly woody just a little bit very teeny but it is a very very beautiful girly dainty soft fragrance it is very projecting and long lasting but it's not harsh it's almost like a airy type of fragrance by the way all of his fragrances are unisex but some of them can lean in certain directions like this one is not harsh at all it's just very airy if you love vanilla you will like this because it just smells really slight vanilla though it's not a heavy sweet vanilla it's more like an airy vanilla and i think what doesn't drive it fully gourmand or in a sweet direction is the fact that it has some woodsy notes in there some musky notes some juniper berry and then it's just more so like airy it's very very airy next up we're going to mention a fragrance that i truly feel is unisex i think a male or female can get away with this fragrance because it is like right in the middle it's the perfect in the middle fragrance and that is none other than grand sore you guys this fragrance is amazing it is my favorite ambery woody type of fragrance it's not really woody it's mostly amber very very warm amber it has some benzoin in there some tonka beans some vanilla this fragrance is really really good a very grounded sophisticated smelling type of fragrance it smells super rich it is probably one of the best purest ambery smells that is not too um, masculine driven or feminine driven it meets you right in the middle and it's the best depth of amber you're going to get literally it is just breathtaking i definitely will wear this on more sophisticated nights um, as you can see i still have a lot of juice in these bottles because i am very timid when using these fragrances because they are expensive and I kind of cherish them and view them as luxury so i'm like i'm not spraying this on no average day <laughs> like i just can't maybe i have so many fragrances that even if i tried i wouldn't finish this bottle but nonetheless if you are going out on a date or you want to show up and you want to make a statement you want people to know you are serious and you mean business and you want that ambery warm depth this is very good for the winter time 
Um, it can also be layered because it's very amber. It is a grounding type of fragrance. So you could definitely put something sweet over this. You can give it a gourmand driven type of amber, or you can put it in a fruity or floral perspective with another fragrance. But nonetheless, it is very rich in amber and it's one of my favorite well blended amber fragrances that just smell so sophisticated, so rich, so luxurious. And you are definitely going to make a statement with this. Not to mention that all these fragrances are very long lasting. They make statements. They are like your people are going to smell you. If you don't want to be smelled from across the room, then don't buy any of these fragrances because they are not your to the skin type fragrances and i'm not saying that in a way where a negative way where it's so loud people are going to get annoyed or not like you know no it's more so if you are a one to two three sprayer you're good you're not going to be overwhelmed you're just going to project heavenly when people when you pass by people you're going to project if you are a heavy sprayer you will will get the projection and i'm talking across the room with some of these fragrances people will smell you and it will do what it's intended to do so all of these fragrances last for a decent amount of time i mean eight hours plus so we're not talking two to three hours and i want to make a correction some people may say like oh some of these fragrances don't last on me and partially it can be true to some people's body chemistry, but also you have to consider that when you are spraying certain fragrances, you can be nose blind to certain smells. So for example, vanilla is a fragrance that I tend to, well, a note that I tend to be nose blind to. And it took me a while to kind of get back into smell. I had to spray it and keep smelling it and working with it to get that vanilla back. I don't know if it's because I smelled it so much when I was younger. I'm not sure, but you can be nose blind to certain notes and then fragrances will smell different to you or stand out. And then it could be to the point where if a fragrance is heavily driven in a note that you're nose blind to and you won't smell it and it doesn't mean other people cannot smell you so it's always good to spray it and give it a test run and if others are constantly complimenting you but you don't smell it anymore then that means it works well with your body chemistry or you might be nose blind to it but others can definitely smell you so that's just like a side note moving on to Baccarat Rouge 540 this is the auto perfume um the straight version is it's tempting you guys like I don't want to get into that because I don't have that here with me. I just have a sample and I just wanted to give you guys my opinion on the full bottles that I do own. But I will say that this one is heavenly love. It's either you like it or you don't. And I feel that it's because of the saffron note at the top. People tend to not take a liking to that. Sometimes saffron can come off to people a little medicinal or it is just not pleasant to their nose. And then others will think it's the most beautiful fragrance in the world. And I'm one of those people who really, really appreciate the saffron in the beginning. It is not a middle or a base note. So what I can say is, even though the saffron is in the beginning of it, it will fade and it does dry down to a nice ambery vanilla base. But nonetheless, it is a very sweet fragrance. It's going to linger. This out of all the ones that I'm, I have mentioned and will mention, this one is much more one of those you don't have to be nose blind to any of these notes to not smell yourself after some hours. Um, you may feel like, oh, I spent all this money and I don't even smell it. But behold, this fragrance is comes and goes, come and goes. And mostly other people will smell you a lot more than you will smell yourself. But it's not to say that the fragrance is not strong or not projecting. It's just one of those fragrances where saffron has the tendency to do that. It's very airy and it will come and go so i definitely had experienced that where i'll spray it and just be like eh, it smells so good and then all of a sudden i can't smell it anymore but i've been told by so many people oh you smell so good what are you wearing what are you wearing and nonetheless it justified what people were saying about it so it's not so much one of those fragrances where it's going to be in your face all day which is kind of good because you might not want to smell it all day you might get annoyed like i don't want to smell like that all day but then again i do i don't know so yes, this is Maison Francis Kirk John Baccarat Rouge 540. And I highly recommend this one. I mean, if you have never smelled it, try it out. I know Cloud by Ariana Grande has been one of the most high standard duped fragrances to this one. But by far, I, I can say when I first tried it, I did feel that um, Ariana Grande Cloud was similar. 
I can't say 100%, but when my nose started to mature, I was like, well, you know what? That saffron note really changes the game of this because I do feel like the formulation of this has sprung out so many other beautiful saffron fragrances that are similar to this. And once you smell this, you're like, oh, that smells like Baccarat, that smells like Baccarat. But what I can say is Ariana Grande's Cloud is more creamy. It's more marshmallow. It's much more sweeter. And it's not sweet. Like, like I say, saffron, like saffron can drive you sweet or not and if you feel that saffron is sweet it's in its own lane not even like a candy sweet it's more like an airy like you just you get the sweetness but it's not tooth aching type but nonetheless i can understand where people are coming from if you're not into fragrances it's maybe 80 percent identical in my opinion the other 20 percent like i say is where the, the ariana grande cloud stands out for a celebrity fragrance girl it stands out in a way where it's in its own celebrity fragrance lane because it's sweet it's airy but it's a little bit more i say dense because of that marshmallow and that creamy almost lactonic like you get lactonic out of ariana grande you don't get lactonic out of this this is just more like sweet it girl sophisticated airy when she walked by you just get a whiff and be like who that <laughs> so that's what I get from uh, Baccarat Rouge 540 and the straight version of you guys. I don't want to talk about it, but I am going to mention that it is bomb. I can say it's more in depth. It's more, it has like a more almondy effect in there and it's much more appropriate for the, for the colder days. And girl, it's just that price tag though. Like, and I'm not one to speak, all right? Because I got fragrances that are more expensive than the extrait version. <laughs> like, I ain't trying to judge. But it's just, it's just one of those things where I have this one right now and I'm kind of satisfied. But then again, I'm not. But if you leave it to me, girl, I'm going to tell you to buy it. Go get it. Get a sample at least. I got a sample and I'm just like on my checklist i've been searching for the sale like who got it who gonna have it for the low but i saved the best for last so moving on i saved the best for last because i feel that out of all the fragrances that i just mentioned this one is the most unique y'all gotta kind of guess what i'm about to throw up here all right i'm gonna say this it's so unique that the only fragrance that i've smelled similar to this one similar not exact not even a dupe it's more like in the same it's the same vibe is none other than nina richie and i did a video i will put a card up i did a video on my channel comparing it and it's none other than oud satin mood if you have not smelled this fragrance you are missing out at least get a sample or just go into you know, Anima Marcus or, or somewhere to try this fragrance because you gotta get your nose on it. If you are a oud lover, if you are a rose lover, if you like vanilla, this is the perfect, the perfect combination of all three of the notes I just mentioned. Cohes like they're dancing together. They're in one room and you can't even, if you, couldn't see and you just can only use your nose. You wouldn't even know what direction to go to because it's blended to perfection. When I say this is the best, one of the best, and I have only a very small select a few. <sighs> this is one of the best smelling Oud Rose vanilla combination fragrances that there is. That is what you're mostly getting in this fragrance. And it comes off to me, I kind of smell, I, I never heard no one say this, but I kind of smell like a slight peppermint in there. I don't know if it's, it has to be the ooze and rose, ooze and rose, how it's blended. And then that vanilla kick, I smell, me personally, I just kind of get like a slight peppermint smell, just like, but it's so good, you guys. If you are in the ballpark for something in the wintertime and you want something very driven in that vanilla warm rose and oud combination, another fragrance that I do own that I think is super beautiful and it's a rose and oud combination, a, a, rose, a rose and oud combination would be Lancome's Oud Bouquet, you guys. 
that is gym. I can say that that can get a little tooth aching a little bit. It can be a little, it's so strong. You only need one or two sprays. I'm not kidding you not if you have um, Lancome's Ubuque. You do not need a lot of sprays. I don't care if you are an over sprayer, try to limit yourself with that one. That fragrance is, um, it doesn't smell like this, but it's one of the perfect and most one of my favorite oud and rose combinations and that's literally what you're getting in there because you guys know oud can come off a little harsh depending on how it's blended or how it is presented in a fragrance and it could really really throw you off it could be dry some ouds can be dry uh, whereas this one is more smoother it's very smooth and then i feel that the rose and the vanilla that they use to balance it out it doesn't stand out in any way it's just all blended to perfection and i feel that this is one of his best creations most unique creations it's very unique aside of baccarat rouge 540 i know that one is heavily dragged into the ground but aside of that saffron note being like the star of the show and opening up all the doors for people to try to kind of spin off uh, that fragrance this one is in its own lane because the only thing I've ever smelled close to this is the Nina Ritchie one that I did mention on my channel and that one was much more fresher and rosier and airier whereas this one is a lot more warming and smoother and just blended to perfection so Yes, uh, Ooh, Satin Mood is the star of the show out of all these fragrances that I mentioned, but it all depends on what you're into. And that's why I said, if you love Rose and Oud, um, but you're looking for something very smooth with a vanilla stench to it, you definitely want to go with this one. If you're into some sweetness, but you want it airy and you don't want it to be too strong, you just want it to have like a beautiful sillage. This is probably uh, one of the... Out of all the ones I mentioned, this is the one with the most beautiful, girly, sweet sillage. Then you have Gentle Fluidity Gold if you're in your feminine energy and you just want to come off not too sweet, but you do want to smell like vanilla without all the extra additives. You just want it to be an airy, very, very light, sophisticated type of vanilla. This is definitely the way to go. And then the the best well blended amber in my opinion is none other than grand swore because this is one of those fragrances where the amber is rich it's pure it's not synthetic you are getting a full well blended amber to the extent of going unisex where it's a true unisex it is not too masculine it is not too feminine you can get away with this as a woman as a man you're going to love this if you love amber so that is my thoughts on the Amazing Francis Kirk Jean fragrances that I own. Let me know what your thoughts are. Some of the opinions of mine kind of correlate with you guys, or is it the opposite? I'm open to all ears, so leave it in the comments and don't forget to like and, and subscribe. Put that notification bell on so you guys can get wind of all my videos that I upload. And until next time, you guys.